Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Adam. And this is Sasquatch. This is the last episode of season one. This is a wrap up episode where we're just going to kind of talk about the season as a whole and like some of our. We're going to rank the movies. Oh my god. Wanda was telling the truth. And it is the Bigfoot. Uh, but to start things off, um, so what are your thoughts on the Bigfoot genre now? We're 10 films deep. You know, we've covered a lot of terrain, mostly horror movies. Um, what are your, what do you think about these movies? Not very good. Really? Yeah, my, uh, my opinion stands from the beginning of the show. Uh, I've seen mostly movies that I have no desire to revisit. Um, that's kind of where we're at with this so far. Do you think that you've learned anything about Bigfoot watching these movies? Has your, what's your, you know, what's the picture culturally that these movies are painting of Bigfoot? kind of fits into the like in the in the realm of horror movie culture it fits into like a section there it's kind of a cross between you know killer slasher kind of things and monster movies so like it's kind of a i guess when i line these 10 movies up and i look at what they're telling me i think the consistent things are bigfoot lives in the woods people are obsessed with with bigfoot like there's always people that know about bigfoot already or are trying to prove that bigfoot exists look new animal species are being discovered every day there's known culture around it already there's never really a bigfoot origin story happening here it's always like look who we found it is kind of strange there's that there's this like love for bigfoot in the in our real world culture but within these films he's like not something like but even the people in the movies have that same kind of culture where they're like let's go find him the whole thing is kind of about like human curiosity because there's also like the link that a lot of them try and bring in between you know mankind and the animal world what we have here are exactly the same kind of bones we have back in museum i'll say i was surprised we didn't get more movies focused on the idea of bigfoot being the missing link you can either take like the science route or the moral route of how do we get here that never seems to matter it's always just kind of about the mashing and yeah. Glory bits, when they which do is fine use that sometimes. kind of stuff, they kind of do it more as like setting, set dressing kind of stuff. Or, yeah. Or to build the mythology of their particular take on the character. So, Takahe has returned. There does seem to be a lot of similarities going from these movies that I find strange. Like the strange things that we kind of are assuming Bigfoot has. Like, you know, mur wanting to murder people, Bigfoot vision was a thing yeah. that we didn't see coming. Yeah, that, that was, was in like six maybe movies. Like it was, it was very present throughout this season. So moving forward with season two, what are the things you'd like to see in the movies to come? More creativity in telling the mythology, the story of, of Bigfoot, adding more maybe not adding more to it but just being more creative with the story that's being told i think um, they can add more to it i think there should be more to it i think that's got. fine but... but the thing is whenever they try and do more to it it's always something ridiculous something like no i didn't right. mean bank robbers i didn't mean a computer that can you know print science <laughs> out of hair you're a woman uh you are 116th black on your mother's side you had a heart disorder when you were a child, and you need glasses. As much as we make fun of them and laugh at them, I still enjoy the underlying passion that these people have that make these movies. I think, you know, even the worst of them are still fun to some degree, because you can tell that, you know, there's something that, you know, there's that dark force that takes over people's brains and makes them run into the woods and make these movies. And I want to understand why that keeps happening because since we've started the show there's been a slew of of new bigfoot films that have come out Constant. we didn't know exist it's kind of crazy uh, just how many there are and how under the radar like almost the entire like genre is What's yeah. the film you hated the most this season? Uh, Night of the Demon. Night of the Demons, your yep. bottom one. Yep. Is it because you can't remember it? Uh, that I that is definitely a factor. I had so much. The this is more behind the scenes. I don't know if we mentioned it really, but I've had so much trouble remembering 
th this movie. Sean will mention a scene from it or something, and I'm just like, Wait, which one was that? And then he'll say it, and I'm like, yeah, I don't... Is that's that not the one, the one with the guy and the, the, the professor? That's not the <laughs> one I would have assumed you would have the most trouble remembering. Because that one's way higher on my list. I remember it more now. I just, I don't like it. <laughs> I really didn't like it. I think it was my, like, the... Okay, what is it about that movie in particular that you, like, really frowned at? Well, the quality of the, of the, what we were watching. <laughs> what, the sounds, the picture, it's not good. What happened to the people? Well, if it was a bear, it sure didn't move like one. Two, I like the, I like the idea of the way the story jumps to these, like, stories about Bigfoot, but every single one is With just... Professor Nugent story time. Yeah, and he's not a charismatic character. <laughs> and then we've got, like, these, like, the stories are not interesting, because it's just, like, 30 seconds of someone doing something, and then Bigfoot showing up and killing them. <laughs> Those are my favorite parts of the movie. Though. I mean, they're, they're fun <laughs> enough, I guess, but, like, it's just, like, I don't know. I, I've i seen it once. I, it's just... Once you've seen it once, I don't know. I feel like I don't need to see it again. It... What's your number 10? Oh, my number 10? Yeah, what's your... Least... Oh, that would be the remake of Boggy Creek from 2010. That is my least favorite film we've covered this season, mostly because it has the least amount of Bigfoot, aside from Bigfoot Girl. The Boggy Creek remake was number 10 for me, mostly because of the extreme lack of Bigfoot and the fact that while you're waiting, there's nothing to hold oh, on to. Man. The classic issue with the editing that we seem oh, to see yeah. in a lot of these movies, the sound and, and like the music in that movie <laughs> just being awful. Yeah, that's a good transition into my number nine, which is indeed Boggy Creek from 2010. <laughs> I remember, I, that's what I would have thought would be your least favorite. Because you really hated it. It almost made I really didn't like it. <laughs> I don't want you in the woods, ever! You understand me, young lady? My number nine is, oh, my number nine is Sasquatch Hunters. I just, it's boring. It's boring. And it's got a terrible CGI Bigfoot. And, uh, you know, I know that's a sign of the times, 2005 sci-fi channel movie. It's not going <laughs> to surprise anyone that the effects weren't great. But that's, you know, the facts were not, no, that's why I showed up. That's why I showed up. My number eight is Abominable from 2020. Uh, really? Yeah, did not like that one. Uh, hanging out in the snow was boring. <laughs> Their ridiculous explanation. I know that was one. Uh, they tried to mix the scientific and the spiritual <laughs> there. This is man's last great hunt. This is Final Nemesis. I'm taking him down. Maybe I was just tired of the human betrayal, and we saw that one coming from a mile away. So like that hurt the movie for me. Maybe it's just that it was so far after all the others that I was worn down. Still right be a there. dick, Bob. Well, my number eight was Devil on the Mountain, and part of it's because I really wanted to cover Bigfoot from 1970 on this season, and I ordered it, um, and I just don't know what happened to it. So I was kind of like kerfluffed that I had to switch movies um, all of a sudden. And, you know, I'll say this. I think I like Devil on the Mountain more now than I did before the show. Because before, if you had asked me what my least favorite Bigfoot movie was, I would probably point to that one. Be like, oh, that one. But now watching it again, I'm like, it's not quite as terrible as I thought the first time. It's still a poor excuse for a film. Frankly, I'm not going to do it again. You listen to me, Pumpkinhead. We can start shooting, killing each other right now. It's up to you. Moving on to number seven. Um, I've got Bigfoot Girl. That's fair. There's not a lot going on with Bigfoot Girl. Right. You, you kind of just want to have to hang out with her and the and James. Good old James. Uh, my number seven is Claude, The Legend of Bigfoot from 2005. I think there's a lot of fun stuff happening in that movie. But just the fact that all of the kids made it out. That really irks me. It irked me when I was a kid. It irks me now. Now even more so that I like am less just accepting of the characters. And I look at like Ray and I'm like, you're an awful person. 
awful person. The fact that you're young doesn't excuse your behavior. You're going to grow up to be a worse human being. And if Bigfoot had killed you, we'd all be better off for it. <laughs> Joe, you really suck, you know that? I'm your cousin. <laughs> we have Sasquatch from 2002. Ah, oh, the first movie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, they come across something big. It just gets bogged down in trying to, like, tell this story about this father Huxley. and this daughter and Huxley. And it just, like, it doesn't do enough work to, like, really, like, make that seem as dire as it is. It needs more Bigfoot. Really needed more Bigfoot. But yeah. looking back at that movie, I think that movie had the best woods. I don't know that it was, like, filmed the best, but that location was the most interesting one. Right. You really feel like you could just like back up into the trees there and totally disappear. Come back here! Harlan! That's also my number six. Interesting. It's, that's right where that movie goes in the list. Not quite in the middle, but not too far towards the bottom. Right. I'm just glad that after, because, you know, that was the first one, I'm glad that it felt a little bit like an uphill <laughs> climb, <laughs> at least for a bit. My number five is Sasquatch Hunters, the movie we watched second. Really? Yeah. I, I feel like that's really high up for that movie. I just think that that goofy movie's characters are like the best. They're my favorite of all of the like narrative ones of, of all the characters. I just, even though they're so silly. What we're basically here to do is get the good doctors <clears throat> and Lou. To where they need to be. I mean, they are Endearing cartoony. To that movie. And They're I like the soundtrack. I like that soundtrack. That adventure movie <laughs> soundtrack. I'll give you that Dr. Ethan Edwards was was really funny. I don't get too excited unless somebody finds something's been dead for a while. My five is Bigfoot Girl. Okay. I, I feel you like it's, it a little bit more it's short and sweet. Well, my experience is basically is ever since I was a little kid, I've seen dead people. It has some... <laughs> James falling. Yeah, put it that high up because James falls. I know that nobody else likes this movie, but, but he's, he's, still, he's got the rope. He's got both hands on the rope, and he goes down slow. That's why it's funny. It's like you're not worried that he's hurt. He goes down slow. Four. Number four, I've got Devil on the Mountain. Really? Mm. That high up? That was just another one that I remembered having fun with. I remember <laughs> laughing at that one a lot more than, than some of the others. The sheriff. <laughs> the sheriff having a heart attack. Like okay. that dude's relationship with his dad that we hear so much about. The the lead robber guy. It's just all uh, do you think that do you think that is the most overwritten film that we covered? The one that like the, the you just like look Probably. at the script and you're like I don't even want to say that it's <laughs> overwritten. I just wanna say that they like mashed like two or three things together that they shouldn't have like i that much storytelling is fine with me i just would like it a little more wow my number four is abominable from 2020 Shh. that film was i can't believe why i mean like you said earlier with sasquatch hunters being goofy i feel like Abominable feels like a cartoon episode where just a bunch of like soldier scientists run afoul of the Yeti and all the scenes without the Yeti are not very good at all. But again, it's <laughs> short and sweet. I really like the effects. I like I like that the Yeti tore people up. I don't know. That one sure. scratched the itch that I had with the the least amount, at least the, the dumb stuff in that movie was so compacted that it's like a short walk with one bad trip here or there i don't know it didn't feel like a short walk to me it felt like maybe like a short distance but up like a snowy hill uh what's your number three claude the legend of Big you Trek. liked claude more than abominable where you going hey tom ah! 
I just I like that's this. They, this one actually had the younger characters for one, which most of them don't. Yeah, one but in Abominable, at least Bigfoot awful. has the decency to kill those characters. I see. I just don't put as much stock in that. I just don't care as much if Bigfoot's out here killing all the kids or the scientists or anything like that. But those kids in that movie needed to be killed. That, 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 that's not a bear. Pie number three is Night of the Demon from 1980. I I will cede that there is some really trashy writing in there as number far as the Bigfoot. Ah. <laughs> there is some oh. trashiness to, you know, you have to have the right kind of palette for this one. But it's really, it's got a grindhouse appeal. Bigfoot kills the most people of any of the other movies in that uh, that we covered. Bigfoot, I challenge any of the other films we're going to cover to top the 15 kills that I got in Night of the Demon. Getting Professor's head in that stove, like that's an effect that's stuck in my brain. When I think about that movie, I think about like... <laughs> I became aware of wandering in the forest. The next thing I knew, I was in this hospital room. Uh, number two, I've got Abominable from 2006. Easily the best of the killer Bigfoot things yeah. that we watched. Their Bigfoot was kind of silly looking, but I liked he was it. fun. I, I just think he looks interesting. He's a memorable um, Bigfoot. Yeah, and the characters are way better. The writing's better. It's still not great. Like we said, it's just the best, most put together movie that we've come across. Right. Um, yeah, that's also my number two. I think it's a good little monster movie. It's not perfect. It's definitely got... Some shabby moments there, but if you're like, you know, a Bigfoot enthusiast trying to like watch a movie with someone who isn't into m the Bigfoot movies, that's the one to pick because they'll probably react the least like aggressively to it. Hey, what are you doing? Let's get this show on the road. No, I was listening to that. I can see like an yeah. early friendship ending if somebody put on like Devil on the Mountain too soon. Or Night of the Demon. Yeah, night, yeah, be careful who you watch Night of the Demon with. Well, then that means we most both have the same number one. It's got to be 1972's The Legend of Boggy Creek. Here an old crane fries over every day. It is true. Yeah, that's that's pretty easily the best movie we cover. Yeah, if you're a Bigfoot enthusiast and a and a movie and or a movie enthusiast, I think that you're gonna enjoy that. It's just a good time. It's a kind of movie you can show to anyone because there's nothing. I guess there's some hunters in the movie, so if you're like hardcore hate hunting, maybe maybe you'll frown. But like, I I just remember the bowl of cereal I had watching this movie. I remember. You know, the Travis Crabtree song. Oh, Just yeah. hanging out with these people. You get a real cultural impression of Bigfoot. That's not just like, we just came from the Bigfoot convention and I bought this hat. That's what Bigfoot Girl feels like. Whereas Boggy Creek, the legend, feels like I grew up in this area and we always talked about this presence in the woods and that kind of defines chapters of our lives. And it just does it in the yeah. most interesting way. I've been living here in these bottoms for... Better than 20 years, I ain't never seen or heard no monster. Yeah, it's just as much about this little community as it is about the legend. And I, I think that just makes that one yeah. so much more interesting. I think it benefits from being so episodic, too, because you don't really get time to get bored with anybody. Everyone comes in, has their story, their reenactment, you know, their, their little moment with Bigfoot. Um... And then you jump to the next. And if you are in it for like the Bigfoot, you know, like if, if if you're like Sean is in most cases that you're like coming after, you know, you want Bigfoot going after people, ripping people apart. You know, this is it doesn't have that. Hey, Travis Crabtree. Wait a minute for me. Let's go back in the bottom. It'd be nice if I had a good one that did that, though. Like a really, like a ten good ones. It'd be though. nice if we had a good one that was doing much of anything other than having Bigfoot in there for a couple seconds. <laughs> I 
of all the movies we've covered, that's the one that we'll probably watch again some morning. You know, some yeah, breakfast morning. That. Well, why don't we give out some stats watch medals? Okay. Okay, most kills. Oh, well, we did say that, Night of the Demon. Night of the Demon, most kills. Okay. The least kills is a tie between Bigfoot Girl and The Legend of Boggy Creek. Right. Both zero. Except a kitten died in Boggy Creek. That's true. Yeah. Most on screen time for Bigfoot. Did we say it? Is it Sasquatch Hunters? No. It is Abominable 2006 with okay. a grand total of three minutes and four seconds on screen. That doesn't sound like a lot, but in the movie it does feel like Bigfoot's in the movie, which is not the case with most of them. I think a lot of the times I'm left wanting more Bigfoot, but Abominable, I feel like I got Bigfoot. I really feel like I got to hang out with him. Amount of big feet in the movies. Sasquatch Hunters. Yes, that one had the most. Uh, with a, I think it was six plus, but I got the feeling that there was like a whole tribe. Right. There. there were a couple others that were like that too. Abominable had an ending like that. but Okay, and then the last one we're going to cover is Location. Okay. These films kind of took us all over the map. We had three of the films positing that Bigfoot lives in the... Pacific Northwest, British Columbia. Those were Bigfoot Girl, Sasquatch, and Sasquatch Hunters. And then we estimated that Abominable took place in like the Washington, Oregon area. I think we went to uh, South Dakota. I think it was South Dakota for Claude. We had a couple trips, a little Southern, you know, we went to Texas. We were in Arizona at one point. Um, so for the most part, for the, we seem to think that Bigfoot is on the western, northern hemisphere, kind of that quadrant. We haven't really gotten south of the equator at all. Right. We haven't <clears throat> gone across the sea at all yet either. Um, no. The one film, the second Abominable, we were like, it could be in Russia. It's possible, but unlikely. Right. That one was kind of nebulous as to where exactly it was taking place. So. Yeah. So, you know, I don't think the movies are quite sure where Bigfoot exactly lives. Seems to be more people gravitating towards, like, the Canada, Northwest area. But it seems like Bigfoot can really be wherever these filmmakers want him to be. Well, let's talk about our favorite big feet. What they've done to make these creatures hasn't seemed to improve very much. No, the older ones seem better to me because they had to use practical effects because I, I just do not like the CGI Bigfoot. Right. It just doesn't, doesn't do it for me. What's your number one? Uh, Abominable 2006. Same. I just like the design. I figured that was yours too. Yeah. That, that, I just like the design of that one. It's got character, more character than the most teeth, of the other ones. The teeth, the mustache, too. the eyes. Like it's just a gangly, crazy, freaky looking monster. He makes you laugh to see on the screen, but if you saw that in real life, it'd be freaky. <laughs> yeah, he'd be upset. He'd run away. Uh, yeah, I just just the, that's the best Bigfoot that I've seen in a movie to date, and I. Would love to find a new one that I cherish, um, but no, so far that's the best Bigfoot. Yeah, I have to agree. We are going to be taking a break here on the show. This is the end of the first season. We're going to take a couple months off and we'll come back here with season two. Um, season two is going to be a little bit different than season one. We are not going to just be covering as many horror movies because I know that there are other things that the Bigfoot genre can offer us. So we are going to be making efforts to branch out a little bit. We're going to cover some family movies where Bigfoot's maybe not so angry. We're going to be covering some animated films. We're going to get into the, so that, that world, see what it has to offer. Yeah. We're going to be covering some comedies. We're going to have more Yetis. We're going to have a 50s movie. And we're going to be covering a 70s porno film. What? Sasquatch. Well, I do want to say thank you to um, Tony and Andy who did our music for us. A uh, big thank you to Patrick, our editor, who had to watch all these films as well and never agreed to. Um, thank you to all the movies that we watched. You know, we, we did. Well, I'm happy that they all exist. And I'm happy that those filmmakers got to, got to make their movie. And I hope they didn't hate the show, you know. At least we yeah. talked about it. At least I paid for it. I paid for all these movies. Well, most of them. Yeah. 
most of them. I paid thirty dollars for a copy of Bigfoot, and I don't know what happened to it. Uh, well, you know, maybe uh, maybe if the show doesn't uh, die before we get to season two, get no, back the show will going. die. It'll keep going, well, even if nobody watches it. We'll still keep making them. <sighs> So join us back here for season two of Sasquatch. Don't forget to share the show, tell people about it, uh, make them watch it against their will. You know, it's, it's a blast to watch it with other people.